It's just amazing that you would write your first play, have it not only kill in New York, but also travel, and then get an opportunity to write on the office and get your own pilot. Like, it's it's kind of amazing. When you say it like that, it makes me, I'm like, whoa, I'm cool as hell. No, that yeah. sounds really cool. No, you but are. I, it was so, there's so much heartache at that time because as much as I was feeling accepted, I mean, I was making like $500 a week doing that play in New York City, but I felt like, it, like I owned the city. And then to come and do this stuff, which on paper, everyone's like, whoa, pilot, you're working on a network show? And then one rejects you, your own bad pilot rejects you. And then the office, which I thought was brilliant and great, like people were just pummeling. Luckily, our second season, things turned around. But I remember being like, I hope I don't have to move home. <laughs> so you, you thought that like, you could have had your shot and blown it. Like that's how it felt. Yeah, I wasn't. I I wasn't sure. I mean, we did six episodes of the first season, so I could, I couldn't even say that I had done like thirteen episodes of a show. I could prove that I was like a comedy writer, even you know, to go staff on another show or something. But you're also in this totally new environment. Like, talk about your relationship at the beginning with Greg Daniels mm -hmm. and how long it took you to sort of get on solid ground or equal ground where you didn't feel like. Because like, you must have been nervous at this oh, time. Oh, I mean, right? I'm still nervous around Greg because, I mean, he's a genius. But the first season was incredibly exciting because I was so impressed by the talent of the other writers. It was Mike Schur and BJ Novak and Paul Lieberstein and, and Greg Daniels. But I was also, and I think that they would be they would be okay with me admitting this, they're not the friendliest guys at all. <laughs> and four of them had gone to Harvard and worked were on the Lampoon. And I was the youngest and I was the staff writer that right. came from New York that had no TV experience. And I remember this so well. I remember Mike Schur, who is now a great friend, has created so many awesome shows and everything, invited BJ to a Dodgers game. It was like a Red Sox Dodgers game, like in the, in the writer's room of like six people. And I remember feeling like so left out and being like, oh, so this is the old boys club that they always tell you about. Right. And I'm witnessing it. It was very exciting, but I was also like friendless and living in a terrible apartment on Fountain that cost like $800 a month that was covered in mold. That could be a lonely time, right? So lonely. I remember being terrified and silent for most of the first season. Oh, really? But if you ask any of those guys, they were like, you were not terrified and silent at all. You were expressing your opinions loudly, constantly. So I guess there's what you feel and then there's like how you express it. But yeah, I thought I was like very demure and <laughs> not saying anything, but no one else seems to think I was.